Here I'm going to demonstrate how to use a tool we'll be using this semester called YAC, which is an acronym for Yet Another Compiler Compiler. It is a syntax analyzer generator or a parser generator. So the input to YAC is going to be a context-free grammar with some other stuff, and the output will be the C code of our parser which will then run through the compiler. Now, Bison is the open source replacement for this, and it's far more powerful than, than the original Yak. It allows you to build what are called backtracking parsers, which are beyond the scope of which we'll do in this class. You can also build encapsulated C++ classes that hold your parsers that are thread safe, and the parsers we'll generate will be not encapsulated, not thread safe, and certainly not do backtracking, but so Bison does far more than what we'll use in this class. And we've already seen Lex, which is a tool associated with it, with Yak, for, and that builds a lexical analyzer. So the input to that is a set of regular expressions and some actions, and it outputs a C file that is a source code for your lexical analyzer. Uh, nowadays people use Flex, which is the open source alternative that is evidently much, generates much faster lexical analyzers. Right? So to demonstrate how YAC works, we're gonna build a really simple calc calculator based on this grammar that you see here. So this grammar consists of eight productions, which I've numbered from, from zero to seven. And you can see we've got four non-terminals, S, E, T, F, so those are our symbols. And then we have a whole bunch of terminals or tokens, a plus sign, an asterisk, a left parenthesis, a right parenthesis, a minus sign. Um, num is also a terminal. And dollar sign is a special terminal that represents the end of file or end of input. So this is a simple, unambiguous grammar for infix arithmetic expressions that we'll use as, to build a simple calculator from. And I'm going to show you how this works. So YAC works a little bit different than most people are used to when they, de when they design a parser at first. You're used, most of us are used to top-down parsers, which top-down parsers, so given an input string. So on the bottom down here, I have an input string that represents an expression, minus three, asterisk four, plus five, and then end of file. So the way a top-down parser works, like a recursive descent parser, what you do is you begin with the start symbol and you try to derive the input string. Yak builds a bottom-up parser. It works backwards. We're gonna start with the input string and try to reduce it back to the start symbol. So if everything goes successful, will reduce this input string into the start symbol. And so we do this by, as we read the string, we're gonna look for segments that look like the right-hand side of each of a particular production, and we're gonna reduce it back. So I'm gonna a simple demonstration. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this works by building a parse tree. I'm gonna build the parse tree from its leaves up to the root. So, it's a simple predictive parser. It's gonna be one token look ahead. So the first look ahead token we see is this minus sign down here. So the first thing we're gonna do, so internally, Yak has a stack. So the first thing it's gonna do is gonna shift that, that minus sign onto the stack. And now the look ahead token, look at, so that's how it's gonna make predictions on what to do. Going to, that, that look ahead token is gonna to tell it what to do, just like you would in, in a top down parser. So. It sees the three and it's gonna go ahead and shift that onto its stack. And now the look ahead token is the asterisk. Now, now at this point, what it's going to do is it's gonna to choose to do a reduction. It's gonna notice this three, which is a num, matches the right-hand side of production seven. So what it's going to do, it's gonna replace the right-hand side. It's gonna reduce it back to the symbol on the left-hand side, which is just an F. So this is the first reduction. Now. When we get to yak, we're gonna see that this is gonna fire an action. Every time we do a reduction, we're gonna fire an action. Everything's gonna happen in, in kind of this backwards order. So the next thing that happens is we do yet another reduction because we can see we have a minus F and this we call the minus F the handle and we can see that handle matches the right-hand side of production six. So we can reduce the minus F back to an F based on production six. 
Then we notice that the F becomes a handle, and we, we see that that's the right-hand side of production 4, which we can reduce back to a T. So at this point, the parser sees the asterisk. It goes ahead and shifts it on its internal stack. And then it sees the 4 as the locate token. Then it decides to shift the 4 onto the stack. So at this point, it decides to do another reduction based again on production seven. So four, which is a num, gets reduced to uh, back to an F, which is on the left-hand side of production seven. And then the next step is to do another production. The right-hand side, T asterisk F, actually matches the right-hand side of production three. So that handle T times F now can be replaced with the left-hand side, which is just a T. So there's our parse tree. Now our T star F is reduced to a T. That's right. So there'll be an action that fires. At this. So YAC will fire the action associated with production three at this point. Then we notice that uh, T is on the right-hand side of two, and so we're going to reduce that to an E. Now the plus is going to be shifted onto the stack, and then the five, which is another num, is going to be shifted onto the parser stack. And then the five, is, again, is going to get reduced based on production seven. The num is going to get replaced back with an F. And then we can see, based on production four now, F is going to get reduced back to a T. So we, the F is a handle, so it's a T. And then the next step is actually we notice that E plus T is on the right-hand side of production one. So we're going to reduce that back to an E at this point. Now, at this point, we see that there's uh, the, we have on our stack now an E and a dollar sign, which actually is a special case that matches the right-hand side of production zero. So at this point, we know that we can actually um, finish and build our final piece of the parse tree, so our root of our parse tree. So now, the final, finally, the action associated with production zero will, fi will fire, and we will have completed a successful parse. And so the parse tree for this is built on the right. So you can see that this parse tree is constructed from the leaves up to the root. All right? And so you got to keep that in mind, that everything's kind of built backwards like this. And and every time, and we're going to create actions associated with each production, and each time the reduction is performed associated with that, that production, we're going to fire the corresponding action, which is, in this case is just going to be some C code. So, so here we go. Let's, let's go ahead and build our calculator based on, on this particular grammar. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use Emacs. I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to name my input file calc.y, which is dot .y is the kind of traditional extension for a YAC file. And just kind of like in, in, in Lex, the interesting stuff goes between two double percent size. So here's where I'm going to actually construct my grammar using YAC syntax. So the, so the first production is s, and instead of an arrow, I'm going to use a colon, goes to e. Now, I don't need the dollar sign. So dollar sign sort of implicit. And then we end a set of productions with a semicolon. Now, traditionally, we, we put the semicolon on the next line, which will hopefully seem obvious in a minute. I'm going to go into text mode because Emacs thinks this is a C file. But all right, so there's my first, my first production. And then my next production is E goes to E. And then my terminal plus, I'm going to put, I'm going to put in quotes. So all the single ter single character tokens or single character terminals go in single quotes. So there's my my next production E goes to E plus T. So that's production one here. And then the next product then I can see E actually goes to multiple symbols. So the next thing E goes to is T. So this and then I'll put a semicolon. So this in, in Yak speak means that E can go to E plus T or E can go to T, right? So that's that's the syntax there. Now for our calculator, I'm actually going to I'm going to add some stuff. We'll, we'll add subtraction, but let's finish our grammar out here. So let's go for for T. We got T goes to T times F. Oops. And we have T just goes to F. So there's our next two productions, and then finally the last three productions. We have F goes to left. Left parenthesis, then E, which is the top level 
expression, or e goes to for a unary minus, or goes goes to num. All right. So there's there's our grammar now. So Yak sees all this, the things that are on the left-hand side of each of these productions and knows those are non-terminals. And it knows all these things in single quotes are single character tokens. Now, no, it doesn't know about num yet. So I actually have to go into the preamble before the double percent sign and specify that num is an actual token. So now I actually have a valid input file that I can run Yak on. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and just run Yak on calc y and, and you can see yes, it actually outputs a file called y.tab.c which at this point really doesn't do anything interesting but if you were to look in that file which is not really human readable you would find somewhere in here a function called yyparse buried deep into the bowels of this crazy thing here so somewhere it's, you can see this is very non-readable human readable source code so but it is indeed source code ah there there's there's our yy parse the beginning of our function called yy parse which is the our parser right so every time you want to fetch yeah you want to parse your system you call you parse your input string you call yy parse and so we'll talk about that in detail and there's the source code so anyway so some really crazy c code there all right so so I'm going to stop here at this point and just mention, okay, this is what we have so far is just a simple grammar that, and you can see the syntax for what a grammar set, a grammar set of productions look like for Yak. So in the next step, we'll actually start having our parser actually do something.